how are you? Yeah, very well, thanks Trevor. Yeah, good. You're the uh, founder of Newsmodo. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what Newsmodo does? Yeah, sure. So Newsmodo was founded back in 2012. Uh, we've created the largest network of freelance journalists and we engage them according to what project we work on. Uh, we work with traditional publishers, um, media organisations, uh, newspapers, magazines, television networks and more frequently now we work directly with brands and other agencies in helping them with their content marketing strategies. So you started really because you, you've worked in the media, so you worked at Channel 10. Uh, what was the reasoning behind setting up Newsmodo? Uh, because it's, it's kind of changed as the new media landscape has changed. Yeah, we've certainly very much evolved along with the media landscape. Uh, back in 2011, in my final year at the network, I'd been there for a decade and certainly seen a lot of change over that period. Uh, there was a, a general consensus that the um, network and many other networks, we were just a microcosm of a bigger picture, was being somewhat dismantled and a lot of really experienced freelance journalists were getting more opportunities to work in other environments and different categories. Um, and certainly the journalists that I worked with um, at the time were moving into a freelance market for the first time. So there was a real disconnect at that point between those opportunities and a really strong market of freelance journalists to work in different skill sets. So the idea behind Newsmoto at that time was to connect those two audiences um, and basically give the media access to a global network of content producers for coverage and story ideas and for those journalists to basically build a profile and use our network to uh, access those jobs. But boy, uh, everything's changed. Yeah, it's been an interesting couple of years and I think this is very much indicative of the market at the moment. Um, uh, the diversification of journalism is continuing and more journalists are looking for opportunities across different mediums, uh, different platforms and now uh, indeed different uh, subcategories of business. So we're finding that a lot of our uh, journalists are doing great work not only in editorial uh, content production for your traditional media publishers but uh, we get more and more requests from brands who are setting up their own newsroom mentalities to help them with what we would call content marketing or brand journalism. What's the difference between the UC content marketing and brand journalism? Look, I think um, very broadly, uh, we would still fit within the content marketing conversation. Um, there's a lot of uh, great companies and agencies out there and here in Australia as well that do produce very high quality content um, that marketers can use for collateral in all uh, shapes and sizes. However, we've uh, got, given our background, a very strong focus in journalism and what to me that means is that we can apply the skills of a good journalist to the marketing obje objectives of our clients, um, primarily storytelling, uncovering um, great ideas, uh, research, and very much a specialization in different categories. So when a uh, content marketer is looking to create an EDM, for example, on a particular topic, um, they can come to us and know that we have the right person to write or create that content. And so I guess as uh, content marketing uh, takes off uh, this year in 2015, we're going to see I reckon probably double or triple the amount of content that we saw last year, so it's going to get very, very noisy. So I guess the idea of you know having quality and having a journalist uh, in on your ranks or in your books to uh, to help you with that content is uh, can be a a bit of an advantage? Look, I think it's a really interesting time around what people consider to be quality content. Um, certainly when we entered the content marketing conversation there was a, a lot of confusion around what good SEO material um, included and a lot of that was primarily based around keywords and how many of them you could stuff into an article. I think that there's been a real education process in the last year or so around what does create good content and what makes good shareable, likeable material that people actually can absorb and it adds value to somebody's um, day. So I think that that's been a really um, big advantage for us in this space because that is entirely our focus. We do focus on helping our clients tell stories that will engage um, their end user and not something that's just going to clog up an inbox. 
And I guess, you know, there's a lot of talk that content needs to be more snackable and particularly as more and more people are re reading and consuming content on mobile. Yet there's also a bit of a swing back towards long form. Um, but what do you... What do you see? What's your comment on around you know, short form versus long form? Look, um, I was looking at some research just this week that um, indicated that uh, pieces of content, written material that's longer than 2,000 words actually ends up being what's most shared online. So there's definitely a very strong appetite for long form uh, content, particularly in material that has a specialist skill set or um, is being uh, directed at people who have an, or tend to absorb themselves in that type of content day to day. Um, it, it really does depend on where that material ends up and I think if you can be quite uh, tactical about where you're going to publish long form content, it can be more of a, an educational, um, I guess, uh, material than what you might find in something like a, um, a blog or an EDM. I think definitely that there is a place for long form content. Um, if you're a journalist and you're looking to really uh, dive into a story, it's very hard most of the time to share that story in under 500 words. Yeah. Um, so I think that there definitely needs to be a, a space for it. Um, our clients are finding that a good mix of long form and short form content tends to be um, a successful way of uh, producing the content marketing collateral that they are creating on week on week. However, you've got to pick your mark um, and it really comes down to the subject matter. So what we would tend to do is we would look at, let's say, eight topics um, and we would work with our journalists to really zero in on what that hero piece might be. Does it need to be deeply investigated? Does it require more explanation? Is there a, an opportunity to create breakout um, material from the original article? Um, and there's all sorts of long form content, um, certainly with other mediums like podcasts and um, what we're doing now in short video interviews. You can really substantiate uh, good investigative work or um, detailed informative collateral with other mediums like audio and video and so on. And I guess the other thing with uh, longer form content is you can um, slice and dice it up and create multiple um, snackable uh, stories off the back of that potentially. Yeah, and certainly with things like creating downloadable ebooks, I think that's been a trend over some time, and I, I can see there being an advantage to um, doing the reverse as well, where you do you've already created um, a, a whole subset of smaller pieces of material. They could then be combined with some thought and perhaps some re-editing into a longer form piece that then can be of benefit to um, end users or a particular market to download and read over their holiday. So tell us about um, the, the growth of brand journalism overseas that you've seen from the trends, because you've got journalists from around the, the world. Um, how, where does Australia fit and, and, and what, what um, countries are you seeing as a result of you know, your journalists going out and doing, doing work? Yeah, look, I think Australia is in a really exciting period of growth um, in diversification of journalism. I think that there's been more conversation here in Australia about the particular topic than we're seeing in the US and the UK, where I would say most of our conversations are being shared. Um, it's a very exciting time uh, for me personally because we've uh, been part of, I guess, a disruptive uh, cycle of um, uh, content production where there was um, initially a lot of questions around um, the application of journalism for content marketing um, and there still are um, conversations around that and I think that there's been a, a shift in the acceptance or even the way that um, both journalists and client end users are embracing uh, storytelling for um, brand purposes. To answer your question, um, there's some great organisations in the UK um, that we work with, uh, journalism.co.uk being one of them, um, and they've created really um, 
broad and tight-knit communities for journalists mm -hmm. um, and having those uh, platforms uh, really does help connect journalists with the opportunities uh, that do exist in what we would call brand journalism. Um, in the US we're starting to work very closely with a couple of partners uh, particularly in California where there seems to be a little bit more of a um, uh, I guess a relaxed approach uh, to content marketing that we would also adopt here in Australia. Um, but again, the, the uh, feedback from our partners in the US is that it's very much content marketing driven. Yep. So there still needs to be an education, in my view, around how journalism can be applied to content marketing. How, and, how, yeah, fits, in how it fits in and, and what the differentiations are between what we would describe as the, the whole content marketing picture and where, I guess, what what we specialise in fits into that bigger picture. Sort of quality, long-form content. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You touched on earlier about you know content being well, what your journalists are doing is it's not just text-based anymore, but now obviously you know you've got photographers and video, and now uh, audio. We're seeing a bit of a renaissance in audio content on demand or, or podcasting. Uh, where do you see that side of things going? And are, are you seeing a little bit more growth in the, the more multimedia approach? Yeah, it's been a, an interesting conversation that we've had with our clients more recently, actually, that um, we've been bringing more of those types of uh, diversifications of content to them and they've, they've actually been accepting or quite embracing of, of those um, offerings. Um, I think that it's a, it's a matter of uh, agencies like ours actually coming up with how as you say, these bits of material can be sliced and diced uh, because definitely at the other end, the journalists that we have on our network and the photographers and the camera operators and the editors, they're all becoming, you know, one. <laughs> um, most of our really high-end uh, featured journalists have the capabilities to go and shoot uh, video interviews, to edit them up, to turn them into small, snackable, um, bite-sized bits of content that can go along with a written article or an audio grab. Um, and we're delivering more of that material, which is really exciting because it really goes to the original concept of Newsmoto, allowing and empowering journalists to diversify across different mediums. And I guess um, with the, the media landscape and certainly journalism as a profession has, has been completely disrupted, um, there's probably more journalists out there now who are freelancing, etc. What, what's their, how have you found them, t you know, now having to work for brands? Uh, because obviously, you know, working for a newspaper and having that I guess that editorial independence, but when you're working for a brand, you have a client in a, so it's, you've always got a client somewhere along the line, but it's just a different uh, relationship. How, how, is, how are the journalists sort of adapting to that, you know, that new mm -hmm. landscape? Mm -hmm. Look, I think that this is a really interesting conversation and really goes to the core of brand journalism. And um, most of the uh, dialogues that I have with both clients and journalists space around uh, is journalism when it's applied to uh, the context of content marketing still journalism um, and, and what is that role? Um, what we find is that the journalists that we bring in on content marketing objectives uh, provide a unique insight and they're applying the skills that they've learned over however long their career has span and most of them have significant experience in research, um, interviewing, obviously scripting, storytelling, understanding an audience, how to speak to that audience, how to share the, the ideas that are at the crux of a particular story. So what we're focusing on is the application of that craft to content marketing. And it's been a really exciting uh, milestone for us as, a, as an agency to see so many journalists in embracing that opportunity. Um, I think that those who aren't are doing so for very valid reasons um, I, and we don't certainly hold that against any journalist who uh, has the opportunity to pick and choose their, um, their work opportunities and where that employment will come from um, and we certainly don't limit any journalists on our network to working specifically for brands or, or 
um, editorial clients. We have, um, I had a very uh, long conversation with one of our featured journalists who has had years of working uh, with the ABC and she has um, stipulated that she only wants to work in editorial uh, conversations and that's great because we need those journalists who, um, who hold that, um, I guess, those journalistic uh, uh, idea ideologies um, for our editorial clients because they're still very much a very strong part of our business. And, um, the news and still needs to be made. Exactly. They still need and journalists doing it. And if the uh, the newsrooms are a little smaller these days, well, then they have to top it up. Yeah. Uh, we, we still work very closely with most of the major Australian broadcasters and newspapers and magazines. Um, uh, we, we frequently have conversations and requests from editors of the major publications, both here in the UK and the US uh, television networks. When big news breaks, they want to know uh, if we've got a journalist who can cover it. So it's great that we've got, I guess, what you would call both sides of the fence. And, and tell me, uh, what on the content marketing side, what sort of uh, clients have you been dealing with? Who's, who's gravitating to content marketing in a big way? Well, I think most of our clients have already gravitated to content marketing and now looking for high quality content. Um, the dialogue that we usually have is um, at that initial engagement is that they understand the value of uh, sharing their stories with an audience and that they want to build trust and rapport with their consumers or um, customers or potential customers and also perhaps their peers in, in the same um, in the same business. However, they've tried doing that and have either fallen short because they've been uh, attempting to do it in, with their own internal structures or other um, resources that they've outsourced to haven't produced the type of con content that they had expected. So we usually find that um, there's a real as you said, uh, push towards the longer form, um, far more engaging material that isn't, I guess, um, 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 very marketing driven um, and provides actual insight. And that's really where the brand journalism comes in. So um, yeah, it's usually an extension of a content marketing objective that they've already come to that point of understanding the benefit of uh, other ways of communicating um, and now want to really um, home in on, on quality. So where to next? Where, what, what does 2015 hold for brand journalism and news moto? Yeah, well, it's a very exciting time for us, obviously. We're looking at international markets now. We're um, about to launch a podcast that will uh, stretch from here to the US um, and, and really building that audience uh, at the journalist side of, of our network. We've got nearly 15,000 journalists around the world who engage in the platform um, and we want to provide continuing value to them. We want to give them opportunities to share their own insights and information and really build a, a, a communication channel between them so that they can help each other. Um, and at the same time, we feel that there's a, a strong adaptation of content marketing to a brand newsroom mentality. So it's a, a really exciting time for us to help educate um, marketers as well in how we can help them uh, create that uh, newsroom look and feel to what they do and really uh, create high quality material that helps them tell their stories. Awesome. Well, thank you for that, Raquel. What's How can people find you personally? Like you're on Twitter and Newsmoto, one of the, the, yeah, the various so web addresses. I, I certainly um, can be found on our website, which is newsmoto.com, and all of our contact information is there. And also, I, uh, I do enjoy following some of the um, leaders in our space on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is Raquel Eberly. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks a lot.